Well, my name is Terry E. Brown. I'm the superintendent of Fort Monroe National Monument. Um, I've been here since 2016. And I've been with the National Park Service for about 28 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What, what got you interested in being with the Park Service in the first place? It's a long story, but I'll make it short. I, um, I was born in Columbus, Georgia, raised in a military family. Um, I lived in Germany and Holland most of my life. Wow. So when I started looking for colleges, many of my cousins were like, hey, you need some culture. <laughs> so they suggested that I go to Grambling State University, where I received my degree. Um, and it's also where I was introduced to the National Park Service. And um, I was so excited about joining the Park Service that in the first two weeks I was hiking, canoeing, and fishing, and you know, rope climbing, and then they gave me a paycheck. And I was like, I can do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> So that's how I ended up here. Uh, so when you got this post, how did that come about? Well, the job came open and um, my bosses kind of suggested that I take a look at it. Um, I had my eyes, my eyes on other parks. But this actually struck me a little bit because it was a brand new park and it was an opportunity to create my own vision. Um, so I jumped on it and I got offered the job. And, it was really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because up until that point, I had never managed my own park, a brand new park, and that was just too much to pass up. So that's amazing. Yeah. So your very first park ends up being this one. Yes. Wow. Yes. What? Well, so how did this particular celebration come about? It's been a long process. I mean, you know, they, this city and various commissions were working on the 400 when I showed up in 2016. Um, there was an idea to open up a new visitor center, uh, which we're all going to open up pretty soon. Um, and as I was looking at that, I kept thinking, well, I think the 400th anniversary needs a little bit more... Um, it needs to connect more to the ancestors. I mean, it's nice that we're going to open up a visitor center. But I think we need to do a little bit more to honor our ancestors. So I started this campaign to reach out into the community, show up in places where people didn't expect me to be, and just talk and get them used to seeing the brand, that National Park Service brand. Um, and over time, I built relationships. And I partnered with people who had the same philosophy and mission. And it started to work over time. And I started mapping out a plan for this day, Billing Day, August 25th. Um, and one of the interesting things about the planning process is that I never imagined that the whole world would pay attention today. When I was thinking of this, I, I was really struggling because I couldn't sleep much. Um, a lot of times in my early days, I was struggling with the fact that people were viewing this as a recreational space. And I was viewing it as a very commemorative space. And I wasn't sure how to get people to transition. Um, so it took a while. Um, so by the time we get to this anniversary, to see this many people paying attention to it, it's just, I can't even explain how powerful it is. My mother passed away two years ago and it's sort of like, I think about her right now because she would be so proud um, of what has happened um, to be able to put this culture and this community in this position. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Talk about purpose yeah. and working in your purpose. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, is it everything that you envisioned? It's um, more than what I envisioned, actually, because um, I never thought that the National Park Service will wrap its hands around this the way they have. Every National Park will ring bells in honor of my ancestors. Um, this community is coming out in full force. Every National Park every across national the park, country? Every National Park will ring bells. There are bells being rung in California, the Cathedral, Alabama, where the last slave ship arrived. I mean, it's just amazing what's happening. Wow. And all I wanted to do was tell people that their ancestors landed here and not Jamestown and that we need to provide honor and respect for that in this space and I think that's happening I think you did it with a megaphone I think I did <laughs> <laughs> I think now I did. 
This is such a massive celebration. How are you going to top this ever? I don't know. <laughs> I think I need to take a two-week vacation first and revisit that question. <laughs> but, you know, I think what's important is it doesn't just end tomorrow. There's no way. Um, as long as I'm superintendent, there will be a driving force to make sure that African-American stories are told here. I mean, we're talking about a space where American Indians were fishing and canoeing 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right here, where the first Africans arrived in 1619. There's a large stone fort surrounded by water inside this fort. It's the largest in the United States, and it was built by Africans. The contraband decision that happened here in 1861 is one of the most significant events in history. It led to the Emancipation Proclamation. That's when three men came across the bridge here, asked for asylum, and they were giving it that asylum. The next day, a few people showed up. By Monday, about 90. By October, we're talking about 10,000 plus enslaved people making their way to this fort. What you know of Phoebus and Hampton is the result of the contraband camps that happened here. That would lead to the Emancipation Proclamation, and we would end up having 180,000 Africans joining the Civil War. And if that doesn't happen, I'm telling you a different story today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, from this amazing event, what do you want people to take away? I want them not to be embarrassed about their history. Our history just didn't start in 1619. I mean, when Africans come here, the one thing that's really important is that they come here with skills. I mean, they understood trade. They understood religion. They knew how to cultivate rice, sugar, cotton. All those things were really important. They mean... What most people don't even know about their history is that the American economy was produced with slave-grown crops. Tobacco, sugar, cotton, all those things were important in developing a hybrid American culture. More than that, those products were sold to international channels to bring capital back into the colonies. That capital was used to build infrastructure that would build a nation for three centuries. I mean, amazing stuff, right? The first presidents, Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, all the way to Jackson, Tyler, Polk, Tate, I mean, they all own people. From the beginning of the Republic to the Civil War, all the chief justices owned people. John Marshall, Roger Taney. Eight, I mean, in 1860, there's about four million slaves here. They're valued at about $3 billion. $3 billion, that's more than all the railroads, all the banks, 48 times more than, federal, more than the federal expenditures of the government. I mean, it is, it's unbelievable that black people are still walking around. When I see black and brown people, I go, you're a miracle. But that speaks to our perseverance and our values and how strong we are. And I honor that part more than anything. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We're proud people. We, you know, we've been handed a bad deal. But you can live in that or you can grow from that. I choose to grow. I will give you one last nugget. I talked about the arrival. I talked about American Indians. I talked about the contraband decision. The one thing that's really interesting is that the very first president who happens to be black, made a portion of this fort a national monument in 2011. So if you just think about Africans arriving here in 1619, 1619, and a black, black president making this a national monument 400 years later, that's a pretty cool story. The first black president? Yes. 2011? Yes. I was born in 2011. Yeah. And my computer was also born in 2011. Is that right? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty cool year, then. Isn't that a special story? Yes. Yeah. It's like X and O's. X wins. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>